We have a, a clip here, speaking of AI, uh, from Brian Cranston, who I loved as Tim Watley on Seinfeld. He's great as the father on Malcolm in the Middle. And he oh, he's great. Breaking so Bad. great in that, yeah. A fantastic actor. He also oh, yeah. uh, played LBJ in a play. Uh, Zach, you want to cue this up where he's 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 got a message to the head of the Disney studio and all the other suits. Uh, we've got a message for Mr. Iger. <laughs> I know, sir, that you look through things through a different lens. We don't expect you to understand who we are, but we ask you to hear us and beyond that to listen to us when we tell you we will not be having our jobs taken away and giving to robots. We will not have you take away our right to work and earn a decent living. And lastly and most importantly, we will not allow you to take away our dignity. Rob, how do you how do you <laughs> respond to that? Well, first of all, I, I love Brian Cranston so much. Yeah. Uh, and I, I mean, I'm a writer, so I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm making jokes in my head. Like, really? Take away your dignity? Yeah. You're, you're, you, you play make believe for a living. Let's, let's, but, that, but I, I think as an actor, it is much more worrisome. And I don't think it's a good replaced by a robot. It's just that you're not going to have to pay Brian Cranston because you got Brian Cranston already in your, on your servers. And you can kind of make Brian Cranston do and say whatever you want to make Brian Cranston do and say. And it is true that the the studios have been planning that because the one thing they wouldn't back down on, well, the reason SAG went out, I think, one of the reasons SAG went out, um, is because they said, all right, well, for you know, big name actors, it'd be one thing, but if you're just a background artist, meaning an extra, what we call atmosphere, right. once we get you on, you know, whatever, we've modeled you digitally, we can use you in anything forever for free. Now, do we know that that is the the contract or the rules that are being discussed? Because I've read that that's a misrepresentation. That, that the studios yes. say, "Now yeah. we're talking about this particular shoot." But yes, that is the yes they they have clarified that. But if you're a, a if you're a writer, you kind of feel like uh, you know what you're 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 going to need a writer to fix the AI. It may be a first draft, but you're going to have to pay a writer, and we'll just just change the minimum. So you had to pay me more, and even though it's a second draft based on an AI draft, which is never going to be right. Just that executives don't want to they don't want to read a script, let alone type in how to write it. I, I don't. I mean, most executives don't read, right? So they don't even I, you know. So, but an actor is different. An actor is fundamentally different, and they I understand it, why they're afraid. There's, you know, there's a, in the new season of Black Mirror, there's an episode uh, that is built around this concept that, uh, you know, Salma Hayek is, her, her likeness has been captured and she's being used in a, uh, in a, in a show kind of not quite against her will because somewhere deep in a terms of service, she had agreed to all of this. There are rules already and laws against using the likeness of people, um, you know, so it seems and again, it may be maybe not for uh, uh, an extra background artist, but for somebody like Brian Cranston, that seems unlikely. Um, is it I mean, like when I hear Cranston, you know, who delivers all of those lines fantastically, but yeah, I'm Brian listening Cranston. to like, hey, let's go break those looms. You know, he was on 44th Street. Let's just go over to the garment district. And, you know, there's a bunch of sewing machines that are really, you know, screwing up how, you know, how much more money we could make per right. piece or something like that. I don't know, you know, it just seems so far-fetched um, as to be kind of risible as a main focus of, of anxiety. I mean, uh, well, of anxiety. I think there's a lot of anxiety because your industry is going through a massive restructuring. And as you were saying, Rob, nobody knows how this is going to play out in any meaningful way. But like that particular concern strikes me as odd, you know, theater, uh, you know, actors have been around since, you know, before Christ. <laughs> yeah. And they're probably uh, going to be around yeah. after he comes and, uh, you know, and wasn't it an actor life. who killed Lincoln. Let's 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 yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, 
I, I, I hear you. I, I, I understand. Yeah, I think I understand what you're saying. I, I would say there are probably two. Um, there are sort of two levels here, and the top level anxiety is something you also see in the writers, which may not be connected to the immediate threat, but is sort of is indicative of the general anxiety, which is that these all of this these technologies are designed to remove what I do, which has always been subjective and was already incredibly risky. Um, and to take me entirely out of the out of the out of the the business, right? Um, and then on a for the actors on a fundamental or closer level, um, part of especially I mean any actor, but I mean a big actor like Brian Cranston, but anybody else is that when a project goes over, or when a project yeah. needs reshoots, which they all do, they got to pay you by the day. And for some people, if you're at Brian Cranston level, that's a whole lot of money. That's actually a, that's a mm -hmm. big part of it. Could can be a big part of your annual income. And if you're a mid range actor, they need you back to reshoot this or reshoot that or whatever mm -hmm. they need you back for. And if they don't have to bring you back, if they can kind of within the context, even in the context of one title, the same title, you know, whatever mm -hmm. that movie was or project was, you're still there. They don't have to pay you for additional work that they've created in the box that isn't effect work, but is in fact just error right. correction or whatever. Um, that's a bad road for the actor. That's a bad road to go down if you're an actor. And that's something you probably sure. want to protect. So it isn't quite something like so much that you're breaking. Well, again, it's, it's completely understandable that actors and writers, uh, you know, want to get as much money as they can for the work that they do. I, you know, that, but then when you pull back a little bit, it just seems like, other industries that have automated, other industries that have, you know, used technology, they figure out a way. Um, I mean, and, and it seems like Hollywood, you know, for lack of a better term, is the last industry that is going to be like, you know what, you've seen Brian Cranston already. We're going to give you a, 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 you know, a fake Brian Cranston and you're going to love it, um, you know, because and if you can if you can replace Brian Cranston and Breaking Bad with Brian Cranston from a Mac book, then maybe, you know, maybe there's not as much uh, magic going on or uh, it just strikes me as it's a, it's a heavy ask to, you know, regular people who just are watching TV or going to movies who are paying more every year, et cetera, you know, to right. be like, you know, but the important thing is that Brian Cranston get that extra check. Um, but because it's, that's but it, what's fair in the world. Well, what's fair is if you, I mean, the, the difference is that if you were making, you know, if you're a famous sweater knitter, you know, mm -hmm. then uh, you may not like the loom because it makes sweaters right. a lot cheaper and faster than you can knit yeah. them. But you, and you really can't say much about it, but you can say if someone I'm selling, if I make a sweater in a loom and I say, this is a Nick Gillespie. Yeah, you have you every right to say, to no that. way, yeah. no way. That's yeah. not Nick Gillespie. Nick Gillespie is the guy who knit the sweater, and I didn't knit that sweater. Right. And so this isn't really anti-technology. It's more like, okay, you can make you can they, you can make a movie now, yeah. and AI's a fake person, and it'll probably look pretty good. You can right. make your own movie star if you want. You just can't call that movie star Brian Cranston. Yeah, I, well, I think, I, I mean, certainly from a libertarian point of view, that makes total sense, because then we're talking about fraud or misrepresentation. And there's no moral issue there. But I also, I, I suspect that there'll be an aesthetic issue where it's like people, you know, people will want the real Brian Cranston. They'll yeah. want the authorized edition of whatever. Then they'll have to, they should pay and Brian Cranston should yeah. make whatever the, the, the Absolutely. toughest deal they can. But, yeah. but I say also, and even now, it's the studios and the streamers that have brought us to this position, yeah. right? Because they're the ones that have created so much content in this ridiculous war they're having for streaming services that makes no financial sense. Financial moves. Oops. They have done, yeah. they, and, the, and the only way, and I say this, oh, I, it, hurt, it kills me as a writer, but the only way um, for them to distinguish a prod, one project from another is with a star. Like a recognizable face. Mm -hmm. That's how you get people to watch. So Brian Cranston's stock and uh, yeah. every other act, good actor stock went way up as it should have because he's got something special. You, now you can't say to the you can't say to people, well, we're gonna take that special thing away. No, you created the conditions that have created this. Now you have to live with your own bad uh, your own bad business modeling.
Let's uh, speaking my, my of business one, well, models. Can I just register okay. just oh, my, yeah. my one uh, worry uh, with it? Because I, I can totally understand where Brian Cranston is coming from, and especially some of the people who aren't at Brian Cranston's level who might be afraid that their image is going to get exploited over and over again. Uh, but what what I worry about with um, kind of an an overreach would be that Hollywood, I think, s sometimes has a tendency to draw boundaries or, or gatekeep a little bit too tightly with whether it comes to the use of new technology or uh, intellectual property. Um, these are all tools for creating new things. Um, and if you're going to gatekeep access to those tools, you're inevitably going to make it harder for the upstarts, the people who don't have a lot of institutional backing to uh, to, to use them. Um, and, you know, there have been a lot of uh, fights over the years uh, to expand fair use protection of re repurposed material. That's a fight right. we fought a lot because we're in documentaries. And so we will, uh, you know, be commenting on other right. material and then you'll get, you know, takedown notices and Hollywood's been a major force against that. So that that is what I worry about with kind of over defining like what is AI, like what is generated by AI, what is like, yeah. you know, my image is if it's if it's sort of based on an image of another person, but it's not really them, is that going to be covered by this prohibition? Th those are kind of like the the margin call type cases that I guess I, I worry about the most. I don't know how it's all you know going to resolve, um, and and there's certainly arguments on both sides. But but that that's kind of what looms large when when I think about it. Yeah. I have a solution. Okay. Because um, if you go back to the glory years, right when there was more independent film, there was true independent film. When when and, is this? Well, you know, pick up you know sometime in the you know late eighties, we'll say eighties, right? So okay, the by the tail end of the studio system kind of fell apart. Um, I mean, you know, from the nineteen twenties on, a block booking went, and the, the feds mm -hmm. got involved, and then TV, and then the feds gotten reinvolved where they had the financial interest and syndication rules, and then that kind of like you know they 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 started to be deregulated, and sort of around mm -hmm. the eighties, people started to like you could really make a lot of money with an independent film. And you can really make a lot of money as a small studio, um, an unaffiliated small studio, by the way. That—that right. uh, that is the solution for innovation in almost every industry, but definitely innovation in show business, or at least to keep the doors open yeah. or more open for change. The yeah. what 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 this. The irony is that the, the 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 very people who seem to understand that sort of in their DNA, which are the techno the technology people from Silicon Valley, the minute they got into the 310, 212, 213 area code, <laughs> they completely threw it away. And they decided, no, oh, I want to have a vertically integrated studio yeah. with both my exhibitors and my studio doing the same thing. I want to eat what I kill. And nobody in show business has ever made any money eating what they kill. You eat what that guy kills a little bit and you give him some of your stuff and everybody yeah. kind of gets rich. And they didn't do that. And if they did that, um, we would not be here in this position. That was an excerpt of our Reason live stream with Rob Long talking about the Writers Guild strike and the SAG after strikes. If you want to watch another excerpt, go here. And if you want to watch the whole thing, go here. And make sure to come back next Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern time when Reason's live stream will be talking with somebody who's very interesting saying stuff that you definitely want to hear.